The theme of corporate greed isn't exactly new ground in science fiction, or even in Star Wars, but Andor does do something pretty unique with the concept in the form of a new planet. The latest live-action Star Wars TV show, Andor, is set five years before the events of Star Wars A New Hope. The series follows Cassian Andor, a mercenary who becomes a rookie member of the fledgling Rebel Alliance. Over the course of the series, it'll fill in the gaps in the story that culminate with Andor stealing the plans to the Death Star in Rogue One, a Star Wars story. While shows like The Mandalorian and Obi-Wan Kenobi have brought fans back to familiar Star Wars locales, Andor will bring viewers to a relatively unfamiliar corner of the Star Wars galaxy. Only one of of the four major planets on the show, the Imperial capital Coruscant has been featured in Star Wars movies and TV shows before. The other three, Canari, Ferrix, and Morlana One, are all brand new creations. According to Empire Online, the sets for Andor were built entirely with practical effects instead of the volume video wall Disney has used to film many recent Star Wars projects. Showrunner Tony Gilroy said creating these worlds felt like playing God. Each of these planets has a unique, specific, lived-in feel. Canari is a lush, tropical world where people live in small tribes and don't speak basic, the Star Wars equivalent of English. It's relatively untouched by the Empire. There's not a lot about Canari, sir. It's fairly obscure. Ferrix is a desert planet home to countless crashed starships. This has led to an economy based entirely on salvage, so that one will probably at least feel familiar to Star Wars fans. Then there's Morlana One, which feels unlike any other planet in Star Wars up to now. It's a mining planet ruled by the Preox Morlana Corporation. While Preox Morlana does report to the Galactic Empire, it's an entity unto itself. It has its own security force that can investigate crimes and make arrests, all of which will come into play as the series goes on. Preox Morlana controls nearly every aspect of life on Morlana 1, not just the government. Its citizens are also its workers. In this way, it resembles the mining towns in the American Old West, where a single company controlled everything. Naturally, this leads to oppressive conditions, the kind that would drive someone to join a rebellion. Morlana One is the first planet seen in Andor. In the opening scenes, Cassian goes into a Morlana One brothel in search of his sister, only to run afoul of two Preox Morlana security officers nicknamed Corpos. Employees are required to present their IDs upon request. He's forced to kill them. This puts Preox Morlana Deputy Inspector Cyril Karn on Andor's trail, and soon Karn becomes obsessed with hunting Andor down. Science fiction is full of massive corporations that are as powerful as governments, if not more so, like Wayland yutani from Alien, the Tyrell Corporation from Blade Runner, or Arasaka from Cyberpunk 2077. It's also full of planets that are governed by one and only one government, like Gallifrey from Doctor Who or Krypton in Man of Steel. However, a planet that's ruled by a corporation is rare, both in Star Wars and in science fiction in general. The nearest equivalent in Star Wars comes from the Legends timeline, which Disney removed from the canon when it purchased Lucasfilm. In Legends, the corporate sector is a region in the Outer Rim governed by a series of corporations under the sway of the Galactic Empire. It's the setting of the Han Solo Adventures novel trilogy that was published in the early 1990s, as well as the accompanying role-playing game, Han Solo and the Corporate Sector Sourcebook. But given that these books are three decades old and no longer canon, they're not much of a guide when it comes to Morlana 1. Plenty of Star Wars planets are governed by oppressive regimes, but this is a case where the government is motivated by profit rather than other forms of power. 